everyone. Welcome to the Free Radical Media Podcast. I am Eric Scott Picard, joined as always by my co-founder and co-host, Patrick Ryan. Tonight we are joined <laughs> by uh, uh, multiple guests tonight. Uh, these gentlemen make up the Warren Arts Center, uh, based in Warren, Ohio. Um, the Warren Arts Center is an arts collective for the uh, promotion of artistic expression, uh, the revitalization of the Warren community. Um, <clears throat> it's an interesting project in that uh, they're working with uh, local governments, local organizations to kind of uh, revitalize and and, and uh, put forward an artistic community there, um, which uh, the Warren area, the Rust Belt in general, is obviously in, uh, in sorely in need of, if you're familiar with the area at all. So I'm gonna ask uh, I'm gonna ask you guys to introduce yourselves uh, individually. We have um, Adam. Hello, how's it going? Uh, Carl. Hey, how you guys doing? And James. Hello. So how are you? Uh, how are you fellows doing tonight? Very good. Very good. Good. All right, thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, um, right off the bat, I guess what we should do is talk a little bit about um, uh, about the Warren community in general. Uh, you know, people might not be familiar who are listening with uh, with Warren, Ohio, but why don't uh, why don't you talk a little bit about the state of Warren as it is now? Uh, you know, obviously these are little uh, you know Rust Belt towns, old steel towns mostly. You know, talk about the state of Warren today and uh, and, and where you think it should be heading. Well, actually, Warren's made a lot of progress. Um, they've been doing a lot of development in that with uh, with the neighborhoods and trying to do a lot of cleanups, cleanup projects. Uh, we we hit a pretty bad spot, I'd say, what about ten years ago? Yeah, yeah. With the city, and then people started coming in and stepping up to the plate and started getting <laughs> everything moving. We got a lot of interesting things going on right now in the Garden District, where there's a a lot of artists chipping in, and they're basically taking, what would you say, like vacant lots? Yeah, just empty lots where they tore down homes. Yeah. and Right, putting some stuff up there, sculptures, paintings, gardens. and that. Right, and there was, there was a good uh, reception to that type of stuff. And there's, uh, I don't know, you want to go ahead and put something in on that? Um, no, I just think uh, you just start seeing a uh, small wave of... Uh, young people starting to move back into the area and interested in um, redeveloping it. And uh, we're just on the cusp of um, a lot of big things happening. And we're just kind of playing a, a part of that. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. <clears throat> sure, sure. So why why the arts then? Um, you know, I mean, what, what, what's the Warren art scene like? And uh, why, why do you think that bringing artists into a community forming organizations you know uh based around artistic expression is going to be a path to that revitalization well i don't think it's so much you bring arts into the community um i mean the talents here it's just really pulling the talent together and organizing it and uh trying to put on events that are going to attract people uh, into the area and uh you know and kind of just highlight some of the things that are going on i think you know too Warren, it's, you know, it's one of those areas that like a lot of what happened to a lot of communities, you know, took a hit and, uh, you know, a lot of businesses moved out and along with those businesses moving and closing, um, we are, we are left with a lot of empty property and, um, the economy kind of took a turn in that. And I think, uh, you know, it, it just, uh, kind of the shadow over the community for a while. And, um, you know, and I, uh, we look at it, you know, why not bring the arts, you know, into it to kind of, you know, lighten things up and show people, you know, um, there is hope, you know, there is, you know, there are people here, you know, there's people here doing, you know, great things and, uh, you know, and that, and that there can be change, you know, and, uh, kind of just, uh, you know, attract people through that. And yeah, the arts are a good way to do that, I think. Yeah. And idealistically, you know, it crosses a lot of, uh, borders and stuff. And it's a, it's a really good way to reach a lot of different people, older people, younger people. Plus, yeah. it, I think uh, artists are more willing to take risk and to go into areas as long as they know that there's a support for them, uh, some sort of support system. You know, I, you know, myself, I've traveled quite a bit and I lived in different uh, 
cities uh, in their art, I guess, area, and, and it was the artists that built it up. And what ended up it, what ends up happening is they end up getting priced out of that area and end up having to move eventually. But normally, it's always the culture that really is the beginning that really kind of develops that area. So we're trying to bring that into war as well. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's really the model too that you see. You know, our artists are traditionally um, more willing to go into into areas like that. I mean, that's how um, Greenwich Village started. You know, New York in the '50s with that whole artist scene. Um, yep. You know, I mean, that's how uh, that's how uh, other artist scenes in New York have happened in Brooklyn. I mean, that's how it happens everywhere: Portland, Seattle. Um, the, the the problem then becomes. You know, the gentrification, you know, like those people get priced out of the area, like you said, you know, and it it, uh, it becomes something, you walk around Greenwich Village today in New York, for example, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely not the weird hipster beatnik <laughs> experience that yeah. it was in, in 1955, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so once you build a community, I mean, how, how do you, how do you prevent it from, you know, turning into something like that? I mean, do you just have to constantly reinvent the process? Do you think? Well, one, well, one thing we we seen there is a a scene get ready to burst open. I mean, you could just feel it down here, and there was a really good vibe going on. And we kind of just uh, we were a part of the wave. We felt it coming, and um, we just tried to jump up on it. Now, as far as like where it goes from there, it, you know, it, it is difficult to not let that happen. But generally, that tends to come with like success and uh, moving into the mainstream that that starts happening yeah and um you know and, and we welcome that you know because that that means that the area is going to have success and that it, it'll grow but uh i think as long as the artists just stay true to what they're doing you know um and keep making the the, the good art you know i i think that's really the the main thing to focus as far as where the people take it you know who really can control that sure yeah it, <clears throat> it's about time you know, th this whole area, this whole region, what, you know, is loosely called the quote unquote Rust Belt, you know, it, it's about time that we really started collaborating and pulling ourselves together. Cause like you guys mentioned earlier, you know, the artists are there, they've always been there, but it's just yes. a matter of organizing ourselves and, 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 you know, making ourselves the most effective. Correct. And anymore, it's easy to, um, market an artist uh, based off the internet. You don't necessarily have to, new, you know, live in New York City or live in Chicago to be successful. And but certainly in Warren, even if Warren does develop into uh, uh, populous or even a tourist attraction for the arts, uh, artists are never going to get priced out of this region um, in the Warren Youngstown area. Um, it, plenty of land. Yeah, there's plenty of land in, and plenty of and in surrounding Warren. Right. It, it's it's a really interesting dynamic going on in this area because for so long, you know, people sort of made fun of it, how it was just dead and there was nothing, mm -hmm. nothing to see here. And now all of a sudden, you know, you have a lot of industry moving into the area with with, you know, things like fracking and stuff like that. Right. And it's sort of interesting to see the dynamic to really sort of be changing when everyone had sort of lost hope for so long. Yeah, and unlike that, uh, like uh, an industry like fracking and that, like the arts is the one thing that can come in and it leaves behind something positive. Sure. You know, you're not sure. going to have that fracking. You're, it's going to be decimated after it leaves, you know, and it's just good to be a part of something that is positive in, in all aspects. It can help in so many different areas. Right, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. M most definitely, you know. I mean, it's it's <clears throat> artists. I think are, are always good for a community, you know, because it's it's it, it, it's like you said, something positive, something creative. Uh, you know, one of my favorite quotes from um, Terence McKenna is um, the artist. The artist task is to save the soul of mankind, and anything <laughs> less is a dithering while Rome while Rome burns. If artists can't find the way, then the way cannot be found. You know, I mean, it's kind of a light in the darkness. <laughs> sure. You know, it's uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, some of the projects you guys are working on are really interesting to me. I want to, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about. You're working with the local land bank, right? Correct. Um, 
so so tell us like what what your goal is there because I, I find it I find it pretty striking I find it innovative. Uh, the cool thing about the land bank is um, the Trumbull Neighborhood Partnership basically manages the demolition and rebuild of homes in the area, and uh, there is a lot of new development going on in this area. And what we're doing is partnering with them to help promote those spaces. So some of these new homes, uh, we might look to do a art show in that space. So not only to promote an artist, but also to promote the space and market to, say, graduating artists and really try to get them to move into that space and take over that space. Um, you know, it's just a way to showcase some of the new development that's going on in the area. Mm. Yeah, and it's using, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're trying to use space that's otherwise would go to waste, you know. Um, I, I, I really enjoy that idea. Um, and Carl, I think you were telling me uh, when we spoke um, uh, some time ago about you went to one of these houses and you guys were, uh, but you were fixing things up. You did some art projects there. Oh, I, um, I think I'm trying to take away. I can't remember what you were saying. Uh, we were doing work at the Artisan. And yeah, then, okay. And then, uh, and then uh, the garden, up at the garden. We were doing that, and then they have, uh, we were, uh, I think you might be talking, we're going to do this pop-up art show, which, um, yeah, you could probably tell them a little bit more about that. Adam. Uh, actually, it's going to be Trumbull Neighborhood Partnership's uh, new home here, and about, they're looking at around uh, a year and a half, but uh, actually the home right next to it, they're revitalizing. So the idea is... Um, you know, by late summer or late spring, they'll have this home redeveloped. We're going to do a, a pop-up art show. So basically the idea is uh, starting in the morning and these artists can come in and they'll take all pieces of a demolished home uh, off that same street, place it as part of their art project, create something in that space, and then we actually just do a show that night. Um, so they basically have whatever it may be, 10, 12 hours to create a piece, um, and we do the event. So, uh, you know, it's something that just kind of pops up. You know, it was a collaborative idea, but it's something different. And that's what they were trying to do and warn is try to create events that nobody's really kind of seen before. And the thing, too, is, you know, um, at the end of the day, and then the community can come in and kind of see the work that was done. And we'd also talk, talk about the possibility of having it up. Uh, documented um as far as like video and that that way um you know trumbull neighborhood partnership can have something to show the individual artists that um participated you know could have something to show that they're part of this thing and also to highlight you know within the community for warren itself you know the to show that there's these type of things going on and, uh you know that there are things happening and uh, you know and that, what art can do you know as far as pulling people together and really get back to the sense of community that it you know, I think that was kind of lost for a while, you know, after, you know, after we kind of took the hit and, you know, businesses, you know, closed and people moved out and it's, it's just, it, there's not the same sense of community there was 15, 20 years ago. And, uh, mm -hmm. You know, and we feel the arts can, you know, um, it's a bridge to kind of bring that back and kind of pull people in, you know, it's not just about the artists, but uh, it's about the people here too, because the artists can only do as good as, you know, the people that support them, you know, we can make all the, you know, we could create all we want and, you know, make make the, you know, nicest looking works of art and, you know, the greatest music. But if there's no one there to, you know, um, take it in, you know, um, it's 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 not complete. So, you know, we're really trying to, you know, bridge that gap and, uh, you know, trying to make it a community type based thing, you know, where it's not just us and them, it's us, you know, all of us together. So. And that was that was another uh, thing about what we were trying to do is um, we're trying to create these events that are. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know how to put it. like a little bit more exciting to where it's more like uh, it's it's an actual event instead of just, just you know coming show. around staring at a couple things right and then walking back in <laughs> and that's what's interesting about this show is we're trying to make it a little more in interactive. Yeah, we want to make it more exciting than just uh, kind of like a stuffy gallery opening or uh, 
you know, or just like kind of like that, I don't know, like a craft bazaar type of thing or, you know, something where, you know, people can come and have this experience that they haven't had necessarily here. Make and, it more uh, approachable. You know, and kind of, you know, maybe a little bigger, a little more fun. And um, so people can uh, socialize and inter interact as well, um, kind of get to know their neighbors and, you know, everyone just kind of pull, pull together and just, you know, have, have a good time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love that idea. <laughs> you know, uh, we talk a lot here about building building grassroots communities, right? I mean, that's the first step toward uh, toward social change, you know what I mean? And to change, mm -hmm. it's just to change the way, way we live. And I think that's, that's such a great way to go about it, you know, like a guerrilla art project like you were talking about. I mean, it's participatory, you know, you're using found materials from the area. It, it has deep roots. It has a story in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it ties itself intimately to the community. And, and that's how you build relations with, with neighbors, you know, and uh, and people, you know, across your, you know, across your area. Yep. You know, I, I think that's the perfect way to go about it. And it, I guess the easiest way to put it is we're taking something old and creating something new. And that's kind of the whole idea of war anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good metaphor for it, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and it's really it's really interesting. Like uh, James, so a lot of James's work, my work, a lot of the photographers around this area have actually utilized how uh, the degraded the area has become. You know, the buildings and the conditions of them, and it's actually become like its own like form. And there's a there's a beauty in it. And there's a lot of history in this town. In, and especially in the, the historic buildings of the, the central district and that. And it was um, so close to just being gone and just being demolished and ran over and that. And mm. there's a lot of us, <clears throat> excuse me, acting really hard to preserve that and in that history. And we really believe in the spirit of this town. And, it, and you can feel it growing and it is getting stronger. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's excellent. You know, you know, to the the point about the photography, you're right. You know, in this area, <clears throat> although you know, you see a lot of it online as well. Um, you know, so I guess it's kind of a, you know, kind of a larger subgenre, you know, of the art. But especially in this area, you know, there's a lot of the uh, the photography that's focused on finding some kind of beauty inside ruin, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, exactly. You know. Um, which I find very interesting. You know, I've, I've worked with that form a little bit myself. I know a lot of people around here who do work in that form, you know, and I, I find those, uh, I find those shots really attractive. I, I find that just that, that sort of art to be attractive in, you know, whatever medium it is. I've seen great sculpture that's, you know, done the same thing and, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, that is kind of a, a local, you know, there's a rich local subtext for that, that kind of school. You know, and the, I yeah, we have, we have the context for it. You know, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I find that uh, real interesting. Um, what else? Um, <clears throat> I know that you're you've opened up a space as well, like a, an actual uh, or are opening an actual uh, artist space for for uh, your events. So tell, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it's a um, gentleman by the name of Dale Bell, uh, basically. Uh, took an old, old building, uh, put a ton of money into this space. And the concept idea was just to make it a artist uh, community space. Uh, artists can come and collaborate and work together. Uh, we're basically just uh, taking advantage of that. Um, he's allowing us to market that building um, and to run with it and utilize the space to do anything from brainstorming groups of artists. I think the biggest thing about artists is that, just like anybody, they need to be surrounded by other artists. Yeah, um, yeah. And artists always need to collaborate with each other and brainstorm. Um, you know, especially if we're gonna be marketing to graduating art students, uh, we wanna give them reason to move into Warren. Um, so we're looking at uh, trying to provide, say, live um, uh, nude figure drawing classes, something that they, um, would need after um, after they graduate, things they necessarily uh, don't have access to on a, a daily basis. So, um, and he's been very open to us utilizing the space, um, and um, uh, we've been very thankful for that. So, yeah, absolutely. We want to try to get in uh, 
uh, along with the nude modeling, the uh, dark room, we're trying to do a pinhole camera class. We want to do something with maybe like a creative writing workshop, um, possibly start doing some poetry readings up there, which we, um, we only have one going on right now. And it, it, the scene's starting to grow to where we could probably put two of them in there, you know, and start uh, trying to pack that in. And um, yeah, what else we got going on? And these are, these are the, and the activities and workshops and that that we're trying to do, they're not just for the artists, you know, they're also um, for people that, you know, maybe don't consider themselves to be artists, but that perhaps have had an interest in, you know, maybe dabbling in creative writing or photography or printmaking or something like that. And they're just, they're, they don't have the confidence, but uh, they would like to maybe learn a little more. And uh, I think one of the cool things is when people come together, they can do a lot more than they can individually. And, uh, you know, we, we can definitely, um, you know, we can support each other, um, you know, um, basically pull each other up and, uh, you know, just kind of do, do something really positive and offer, you know, some things, you know, for um, the community and, you know, people in general. So this, I mean, it's really not just about the arts or the artists, you know, it's really, like I, like I said before, it's, it, it's really about all of us, you know, here in the community and uh, just trying to give, you know, something else for people to do, you know. Yeah, and this is something that people wouldn't really generally have access to unless they were getting to like a uh, a university or something. Larger city. Yeah, like a, yeah. And they'll be affordable too, because that's one thing too, right. is like, um, we realize, you know, we, there's not a lot of money here, you know, and a lot, a lot of people don't have the money to spend. And one thing we can do is, you know, we can make it affordable for people and we can make it fun. And, uh, you know, and if we come, and that's by coming together, you know what I mean? By tapping into multiple resources and, you know, the more people we have, the more we can accomplish with that and uh, and not look at it as competition. Right. And I mean, how cool is that if we get some kid that would have never seen a dark room before, you know, and ends up absolutely like the yep. next big, the next man ray or something, you know, so. And, it, you know, that that's such a good point because you really don't ever see that in the mainstream, you know, art institutions. You know, it, it's it really is just a bunch of people a lot of times just walking around you know being all quiet staring at art pieces but not really allowing the the viewer to get engaged and i i think that's Absolutely. i yeah. think that's an awesome thing you guys are doing you know allowing the opportunity for these people to get more engaged and to create their own art yeah and it makes it more enjoyable i think on you know the level you know just you know as far as the artist and you know the person doing the viewing um, you know, interpreting it or whatnot, it just, uh, you know, to engage people like that and to pull them in, you know, I think for an art, I mean, artists, you know, love for people to, you know, they like to show their stuff off, you know, they, you know, it's not just about creating stuff and stick it in the closet and never showing it again, you know, they're, they like to have the platform to be able to put it out there and, you know, and, you know, so we're, we're going to do, we're going to have some events that kind of, you know, that we're going to do and kind of promote that. And because the thing too, is there's a lot of people here, you know, in the Warren Youngstown area that make a lot of great stuff, but they just don't have, you know, the the ability or the place to actually show the work. And uh, yeah. so we're going to do the we're going to do the type of events and um, and whatnot that where people can just, you know, maybe it's not something that's marketable that they're doing. You know, maybe they can't just sell it um, because maybe it's not, you know, pleasing to everyone. Um, but, you know, to offer, you know, a platform where people can kind of like at least, you know, put it out there and you know, and, and if one person does it, then, you know, it shows someone else that they can do it and then someone else that they can do it and so on and so on. So we're hoping it will trickle down, you know, and inspire people. Yeah, yeah and definitely have something that doesn't have an attitude against something that is not of a certain uh, quality. Like uh, we're, we're, we're going to be accepting, you know, independent artists, professional artists, amateur artists. We're going to be have we're, we'll have something for for everybody so we can get uh, get people stuff out there. So it's going to be, we we're trying to create something definitely that's all inclusive. Yeah, I kind of want to get away from the exclusive type. I think, you know, a lot of times too, people look at it, you know, trying to find the next great artist, you know, like an individual and, uh, um, you know, and it, it's very limiting, you know, um, you know, because there, there's, there's so much talent in general in the world and, you know, to look for one or for two is kind of, it's almost like ridiculous. It's, it creates this like competition between people and, uh, you know, and it cl I think it closes a lot of us off, you know, and uh, and a lot of us, ha you know, come under the mindset that, uh, you know, well, I can't work with this guy or that guy and uh, or this girl or that girl. And, uh, you know, I, it's been my personal experience, you know, if we come together, you know, there's number, there's number or power in numbers, you know, 
um, the more of us that come together, the, the greater, you know, we can do. And, uh, and throughout history, we can, you know, you can look at it through uh, different schools of, you know, artists that have done that, you know, and changed, you know, made a dramatic shift and, uh, you know, um, public perception or, or whatnot, you know, and changed, you know, the course of history by coming together, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. and all those, and, and the greatest movements have been started by art, you know. Oh, they absolutely. Get, they, get, they get the people all riled up to begin with, you know, and get them all unified. And, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely something all-inclusive. I think that's why we tried to head in the uh, in direction with doing something that was inspired by the Dada movement, was, you know, to, to get, uh, Dada was known for not turning down any artists, <laughs> you know, so uh, how much more all-inclusive all inclusive could you, yeah. could you yeah. get? No greater so that was it. That was a good pick for our first show. Yeah. We and that's because we want to. I think there's a perception too where people look at arts, um, you know, visual or performance or, or whatnot, and uh, they think there's a right way and there's a wrong way. And, uh, you know, and they it, we become very judgmental. And, uh, you know, we're kind of opening it up to, you know, there is no right or wrong. Just do it. You know, if you got something to say, say it. You know, who cares what the next person thinks, you know? And I think that's, you know, a lot of us, I think in general, you know, have have something to say it's just we don't have the platform to do it you know and sometimes we're so we're so worried about what the next person's going to say or to be judged and it, you know it's difficult and, uh, so we want to give that opportunity where people can express themselves without you know the fear of worrying you know what what someone's going to think and i think that'll inspire people because uh i think that you know a lot of us you know um are a lot of our fears and insecurities you know we are, you know, a lot of us have the same ones, you know, we just don't talk about it. We don't put it out there yeah. and, uh, you know, and so I think if we do events and whatnot, where we kind of put it out there, people can kind of say, oh, he's kind of like me or she's like me. And, you know, I don't feel so alone, you know, and, uh, yeah, and I think I it's interesting. Part of, yeah. yeah. Cause we've actually, um, you know, we, I think a lot of people were afraid to showcase a lot of, you know, a lot of these are commercial artists too. And uh, a lot of them were afraid to do things that they really want to do or they were very passionate about just for because they were worried about the backlash. And I think once they saw that we were actually supporting the idea and we encouraged it, um, I think they became more open and they, I think they felt a little bit more relieved that there was some sort of support that, yes, it's okay to be able to, you know, whether or not somebody gets it or doesn't get it or somebody might be offended by it or not offended by it. I think they just said, okay, well, let's just go ahead and do it. Yeah, um, It's like getting back to like when you were a kid and you just kind of draw, you know, did your drawing or coloring and you kind of didn't care what anyone thought. You, just, yeah. you did it and you liked it. You know, you knew what you liked to do and you did it. You know, and you didn't worry about what other people thought. And, you know, it's like the older we get, the more we become consciously aware of what other people think and we start to worry about that. And, you know, we grow into adulthood and uh, we get so tied up into that that it, it loses its fun. You know, and uh, we get so worried about, and it really, I think, limits a lot of us because we're so concerned about what the next person's going to think or to be judged. And uh, so we just want to kind of do, you know, do a couple things where, you know, people can kind of open up and, you know, maybe they decide, you know, they do it and they decide they don't like it, but they at least tried it, you know, and kind of kind of going back to being like a kid again. You know, that's how I look at it. And to get away from that system where your, your art is judged as a success by how many pieces you sell yeah. and that to actually yeah. create a community where we're supporting each other to where you know, like your material, you're not judging yourself by that alone. And that's where that's where a lot of the uh, the direction was going in was by like uh, the only people that were getting attention were the people that were selling the pieces. And you, you lose a lot of uh, powerful creative voices when you tend to do that because sometimes the, uh, the mainstream or the financial success, it, it, it isn't really a gauge of the artistic merit. No, and it's, you know, even with social media, because it almost becomes competitive, like who can get the most likes or retweets and, you know, oh, and like that's what makes it a, a good, you know, I mean, we look at it at like a quantity over the quality of it or the, you know, the experience itself of actually doing it. You know, we get so tied up and, you know, well, I want everyone to like it, you know, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and it, kind of, it loses it. You know, it's I, if you watch TV, I think, you get you know, modern TV, I think, has a lot of that feel. You know, they, they kind of sell to the emo, you know, this emo, like, I don't know, this plastic emotion that kind of is out there. And um, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's mind numbing after a period of time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, believe me, you know, I'm a, I'm a writer, you know, I'm aware of the writers, man. I mean, we can be viciously competitive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like viciously competitive, you know. Um, but I mean, that's, that's exactly right, though. 
it, it's it's to me an artist is someone who is is dedicated and passionate about the act of creation, right? Yes. Um, regardless of whether or not you sell anything, correct? You know, um, I mean, some of the most interesting art I've I've ever like seen, heard of, are people who create pieces of art, you know, like uh, flower arranging, things like that. Something that's ephemeral, something that necessarily can't be saved. Yes. You know, they're just creating it for the act of creating something beautiful, you know. Um, and, and, and you know, professional artists, amateur artists, you know, the, the point is to get together and create something. You know, Absolutely. I mean, that's that's a worthy act in and of itself, I think. Absolutely. You know. Right. And it, it creates such an awesome atmosphere um, to, to bring like-minded people together who might not necessarily be artists in the traditional sense of the word – but to bring them together in that sort of creative space to maybe, you know, share ideas and to share, you know, visions of the future, visions of, you know, various potentialities. I think that alone is hugely important. And you're not going to get that going to a bar on a Saturday night, no. you know. No, no, At no. least not remember it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, right. and then back to the uh, – Back to the building at the artist, and that's uh, another thing. Is it, it's a cafe too, so we're gonna have like a, you know, create a cool atmosphere up there to go up there and hang out. So not only just in addition to the classes, and you know, it'll also be a place where you can just go there and chill and, and chill. get a cup of coffee, and you know, just talk with other artists, and you know, and just sit there and marinate in a good environment. Yeah, you know, it's like the, those are the kinds of places where ideas and movements are born. You know, Absolutely. the little cafes. Yeah. Well, when I when I first saw the building, because it's like, what is it, five stories? Four. Four, Four stories, and it's this old, uh, like, it, it reminds me of the U-Haul building out in Youngstown. Kind of, I mean, it's different, but it's just this big, giant building in the middle of the city, you know. And, um, well, not in the middle, it's off to the outskirt, but it's surrounded by all these smaller buildings. But And I've seen it, and um, it's just got a really cool feel and a vibe to it. And I, when I saw it, I immediately thought of uh, Chelsea Hotel. Mm. And, uh, yeah, what was going on up there with the beat authors, Patti Smith. And, yeah. And yeah, that whole cool vibe. And I'm like, and it, I already felt this vibe coming on. And then that was, like, right around the time when I first met James. And then uh, we just started hanging out. And then I ran into Adam, like, uh and he was a he was a childhood friend, and he was on the same path, and everything just lined up, man. The building, all the friendships, uh, the connections that we had, and it was just kind of like, why not do this, you know? And I think once you make the decision to kind of follow a path, and I know for me, uh, and I think for a lot of people, you know, we become so concerned with what other people think, and uh, you know, and once you know, we kind of you know get over that hump. Um, you know, and we start finding like-minded people, and uh, you know, and like attracts like, and. You know, we've kind of come together that way. You know, that's kind of how we, the three of us, kind of came together, and some other, and then other people as well. And uh, you know, we're and we're just trying to sell that, you know, idea, you know, um, larger. You know, trying trying to speed it up a little. You know, um, so yeah, it's, it's yeah, been interesting. It, oh, I'm, I'm sure. You know, I, and I've been involved in artist collectives before. You know, especially if you have like a hub like that, which it sounds like you're creating one of the best hubs I've, I've heard of with all the community spaces. But um, the energy around something like that is just incredible and positive. You know, I mean, there's a creative energy that really propels everyone involved to want to do something, yeah. you know. Um, it, yeah. yeah, go ahead. The one thing about Warren was, uh, you know, when I graduated high school, it was actually not uncommon for people just to leave Warren. You didn't really, it wasn't, you never really had an idea that you would actually stay in Warren for the most part. It and was a nice place to be from. Yeah, it was a nice place to be from, <laughs> but you didn't really live there. And uh, we're trying to change that attitude. And, you know, a lot of us actually have, that have moved to big cities have come back. That's one thing I like about the artists. And I feel like I'm in the big city. It has that brick wall feel. And um, we're, one concept that we were actually looking at is actually to give graduating high school students an opportunity to showcase their work even before they go to art school. Mm. Um, that way they have the experience of it. Uh, that was one thing I wish I could have done. You know, I went to art college, but I never really had the experience of actually having my own show even before, you know, I went to college. Um, but 
it also gives us an opportunity to, instead of those students leaving the area, to possibly stay in the area and, and kind of continue what we're doing. Because we're not, I mean, we're going to get old. We're going to have, you know, we're going to need to, you know, keep this uh, movement moving forward. Uh, and we want to replace ourselves as well. So. Absolutely. And get back to just having fun. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Sure. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. You know, you want to build something that's going to be lasting and sustainable, which is which is great. You know, like you said, a lot of people do move away from areas like this, which is an it, it, it's it's partially understandable in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But then again, I mean, you also have to build something around wherever you are. You know what I mean? Um, it's hard to just go somewhere else and find something you immediately drop into and it'll be perfect. Right. I mean, no matter where you go, you're going to have to do the work to build something that you want to be involved in. You know, it starts really with yourself. Absolutely. And, and you yeah. might as well do it in your local community. You know, I, I, I'm looking at you guys as like a model for people out there <clears throat> who, uh, you, you know, they're sitting in whatever town they're in right now and, and maybe they're dispossessed or, or they feel like they don't have the opportunity, you know, to express themselves. Well, you can pull together a, a, a great living community organization like this, you know, pretty simply, you know, you just get together with like-minded people and you build something. Yeah. And I think, I think it's a matter of, you know, it starts with the individual, you know, it's making that decision that you're going to do this thing, you know, and, uh, and you do it. And then when you do it, I think it, it, like I said, it attracts other people. You know, all of a sudden you find other people that are doing it and yeah. one, one becomes two, two becomes three, three becomes four and so on and so on. And that, but it's got to start somewhere, you know, yeah. Um, you know, it's got to start with one. And I think a lot of times we just we're always waiting for someone else to initiate the change. And uh, and I, I, I think a lot of us don't realize it really if we if we want something, if we want something, you know, we really got to start taking action for it. You know, yeah. change just doesn't happen. You know, it, it takes someone to you make a choice, a conscious decision to do it and actually do the footwork. And uh, and I think some of us just want an easy, you know, like let someone else do it. You know, I, I just kind of want it to be, I want it yesterday and I want it the easy way. And, uh, you know, and it takes work and it's, you know, it's, it's getting over the, that hump, the fear of, you know, are, am I going to fail? You know, what are people going to think? And just, just not worrying, you know, and I think for this area too, it's, there's such an old mindset for areas, you know, like Warren and, uh, you know, Youngstown, um, surrounding areas where people just kind of get in this mindset that things can't change, that they were a certain way. And Youngstown's changed though, um, you know, more recently, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and that's been a, inspiring i think to a lot of us you know where they kind of got you know got past that mindset of you know why even try you know it, mm -hmm. it is what it is and uh you know and i think a lot of the younger people you know finally realized it doesn't have to be that way you know we don't accept what you're telling us and we're going to do something else you know um i'm going to better my life regardless of what you tell me and uh, that's kind of what we're doing you know and uh, we're trying to make something and you know not making it about any one individual and making it about you know, um, the whole community, that way it can last. You know, if, if we make it just about one or two or a few, um, you know, it's going to be that much more short-lived. So I, I I don't know. I feel the more people we can pull in, the longer this thing can kind of go on. Uh, no. And there's such a there's such a wealth of talent. Oh, absolutely. Here. I mean, they're, they're just this And supportive people. And yeah. supportive I mean, this people. area has some of the most encouraged, you know, they might not have the money to buy stuff, um, but, you know, uh, they're there to be, the, you know, emotional support or, you know, to, you know, just encur encouraging and saying, you know, great job or keep doing what you're doing. Just or, showing at an event. Or just smiling, showing up and smiling and, you know, just enjoying themselves. And, you know, people like that. You know what I mean? People like the, like that feeling. And, you know, artists eat it up. You know okay. I mean, it feeds into the ego of it all. It's, you know, it's <laughs> hey, just as important. Yeah. 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 You got to have the people supporting it. No, yeah, and that's how you build relations among people. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, uh, <clears throat> I mean, that's that's how you, you know, again, pull a community tighter, you know, as a unit, you know, and, and healthy communities that are close together, you know, they don't have problems, you know, like you you, you know, communities that are isolated. Yes. You yeah. know, if and you know your neighbors, I mean, you know. And yeah, and that's one thing I think, uh, you know, Warren's no different than a lot of places. I, it's just I think. Uh, 
as history has gone on, we've become more detached, you know, um, from the people surrounding us, you know, and not knowing our neighbors and worrying about, you know, who's next door. And, you know, and I think these type of events that we're doing kind of, you know, helps pull people out of their houses and, you know, gives them the place to come and interact with people and, you know, kind of, you know, maybe they're, maybe they don't create art, but maybe they look like looking at it or maybe they just like doing, you know, going to cool events and, you know, they start finding other people like that and, you know, they strike up a conversation and, you know, a friendship or, or whatnot. And, you know, and it because it lo- and then this area loses that sense of like cl- being closed, you know, it all of a sudden starts opening up and, you know, it's uh, hopefully, you know, people can start to see a different world, you know, surrounding them. And there is an environment. Yeah. There's like this weird sense that Warren is almost like a dangerous place like down. Yeah. Warren. It's, yeah. And, uh, which that's what another reason doing these events and, uh, you get people down here and you see that it's really not so dangerous. I mean, I go, I go there in the middle of the night to shoot photographs, you know, two, yeah, four in the morning. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, every, every, every city has its problems and that, but, uh, yeah, there's been a, there's been a big turnaround with stuff like that. And th- yeah, this entire summer I was out there almost every night at like four in the morning taking pictures and, uh, I never really had any problem. I never had one problem. And I, I think part of it too is if, if people, if, you know, if there's even one negative um, experience or whatnot, I think people tend to share that a lot when there's not positive experiences going on. So, you know, we're just trying to organize stuff that's more positive so people don't focus on that one negative thing that happened. You know, if we start doing enough, enough things community based and coming together, you know, give them, you know, that to talk about. And once people start focusing on the positive, you know, they'll not be so focused on the negative. And the thing about the negative too is, you know, it can be something minor, but you focus on it long enough and it just becomes this big thing that every, and you know, and this person's telling that person and they just can't let it go. And it's, uh, you know, it's it starts out as minor and it, yeah, it becomes sensationalized and, you know, and it could just be, you know, something seemingly ins- insignificant, but there's nothing else to talk about. So, yeah. you know, just having some positive things in the community for people to kind of focus on and, you know, and discuss. let that grow, discuss. Yeah. And, it's yeah. cool. Come out. You're safe. You'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I've, I've done the same thing in, in, you know, downtown Youngstown, very, in various parts of Youngstown, you, you know, late at night. There's a different culture in a city late at night, you know, it's a different vibe. I really enjoy mm-hmm. it, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning or like, especially at dawn in the middle of the city is just oh, gorgeous because yeah. it's, it's you, empty uh, and it's, you know. <laughs> we're out in, <laughs> we're out in Youngstown. Shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're down. Um, yeah, for for people listening, uh, our communities Warren and Youngstown very close together, but rarely, you know, I we rarely mix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, because I I attended YSU and uh, yeah, it was. I remember when I was in Youngstown, it was just you know Youngstown, and when I was in Warren, it's just Warren. You know, what I mean, so. And we're hoping in the future to kind of bridge some of that gap. And, well, and we promoted our Dada event a lot in yeah. Warren. We went to YSU's art department. Um, so we're, it's going to be kind of opposite. We're normally people from Warren go to Youngstown. We're, we're trying to get people from Youngstown uh, down to Warren. Yeah, because you know, yeah, we're trying to not focus just on promoting it within this area, but the surrounding areas to kind of, you know, pull people in and kind of, you know, get people from Warren to talk to people from Youngstown, you know, and engage and kind of maybe collaborate in a few, you know, future collaborations or whatnot. And because there's a lot we can learn, you know, from people in Youngstown and vice versa, you know, and it's just like any community. Yeah. We're surrounded by a lot of big cities. I mean, we've got Pittsburgh yeah. an hour away, Cleveland's Cleveland, an hour away. So, Akron, Cincinnati. You know, Cincinnati. Akron. Yeah. So we're not far from, um, you know, large base cities that yeah. we can actually pull from even for artists. We're yeah. really fortunate too to have uh, there. There are a lot of people in um, in positions that can help us that have the vision to see what we're doing to support us. You know, and that's that's really saying something nowadays because a lot of things are so so much uh, greed motivated, and a lot of people don't see the the long term uh, projects and the payoff there. And this is a different kind of thing. And um, yeah, we're just we're just very fortunate to have people here that support this and. Uh, yeah. yeah, Carl made a good point. It, you do get a lot of businesses, especially in the downtown area. Uh, you know, our data event wouldn't exist without uh, business support, um, you know, for donations and sponsorships. So, uh, just to initially get started was based off of money 
um, sponsored by local businesses. And um, a lot of these local businesses talk and they, you know, we've got a lot of good feedback and more of these businesses have been coming up to us and say, how can we help? You know, what, what do you need? And uh, which makes us feel good. It seems like we're in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, just to have uh, people see that there's a value in what you're doing and, um, yeah. you know, and willing to back it, you know, um, you know, monetarily, you know, which is great for us, you know, and, uh, and great for the, you know, in turn, great for the community. You know, to, to have people see that this area is worth investing in, you know, and putting putting effort forth, you know, that it's that, you know, it's not lost, you know. Yeah. Well, when the artist is in a position where they have to basically pay for their own material, produce their own material, and then they have to pay to promote their own work and they have to, you know, to, to get into shows, to do this and that. And in the end of it, the artist is losing money. And then, um, you know, it. it we're trying to, to create something where we can uh, do like the, the promotion ends, the aspects of that to where like because it, it's it, the art starts suffering. The quality of the art starts suffering because basically the artist is starting to give up on even making work or making ambitious and yeah, and more ambitious work because of uh, the, the financial red lines on it. And, you know, so this will be something where we'll be able to help. They got some uh, bigger projects coming up and. We'll hopefully be able to pull some money into the area for the arts to do those type of projects. Yeah, especially working with nonprofits. Um, you know, the nice thing is they they do all the you know they do grant writing and they help find a lot of the monies and then um, help us put on these events as well, which is uh, which is pretty awesome. And then that pays out to the artists. I'd like to hear a little bit more, if you could, about your um, your your Dada event. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, the Situationists, right? Um, who who were kind of tacitly involved in that style of art or that attitude of art, you know? Um, yeah. one, of, one of the books that really uh, that led me, for example, to alternative media was um, uh, Yida Bo's, uh Society of the Spectacle. Right, which was one of the first critiques of mainstream media, you know, and that came from the situationists, you know, so you have, you know, interesting radicalism coming out of that, like, style of art, you know, to tell you a little bit about what, what made you to decide to do that as your first kind of, like, showpiece. Uh, you know, I remember, I, I actually had the idea for it, um, I was actually sick one weekend and uh, laying in laying on the couch and uh and i was just kind of thinking about you know as far as like moving forward in general um not just in art but in you know within society or, or you know um, our culture and whatnot and uh and i thought a lot about like how a lot of times you know people tend to look back and uh so i started you know for being an artist i you know i was thinking about different art movements and whatnot and it was the one that really stuck out to me because i mean it was very much an intellectual art movement and uh it, and, it, and such it was you know um a lot of people look at it like an anti-art or an anti-war or this and that but it, it was where um it was a movement where you know people kind of said you know this you know this thing you've told me um you know the way things should be you know how i should view art how i should view society how i should view myself what's beautiful what's not you know maybe you're not right you know maybe there's a different way and i think you know and talk you know we've been talking about more in this area and uh and it's kind of like that for me it kind of there was that mindset where a lot of people you know would tell us you know this is the way it is it, it's been this way you just kind of accept that you can't do that and uh and you know i was thinking you know this would be a great movement you know for a lot of us, if we, if we kind of went back to, you know, um, to what, you know, they initially, you know, that radicalism or, you know, that anti or um, just to have the ability to think and, you know, ask questions and kind of put it out there. And I thought it'd be interesting, too, to see um, how artists would interpret it, because one thing is we're not necessarily going for, you know, um, the visual, you know, a lot of people, have, you know, they think of Dada, they have this very visual, you know, idea of, you know, you know, maybe Mar some, a work by Marcel Duchamp or, or Man Ray or, or any number of them. Or, um, we're not going for that. We're actually going for what the artist, you know, what their intent was. And, uh, and I thought it'd be interesting to see how artists in our area would take that information and what they would recreate. You know, maybe not focus so much on the visual, you know, making a visual copy or, you know, facsimile, but uh, trying to just take the intent, um, the philosophy of that movement and how would that look to, in today's society. How, you know, give the artists this information and what do they interpret that to be? And, uh, 
and it was kind of it was kind of cool because a lot of people were apprehensive at first, and uh, I think once they realized, you know, the freedom that they had, you know, um, the ability and the freedom, you know, they kind of everyone's just kind of grabbed onto it, and it's become it's turned into this thing that's kind of been fun, and you know, and there's a lot of people that uh, you know realize that they have something to say, you know what I mean, and uh, that you know perhaps in the past, you know, some of us Adam talked about is a lot of the art artists involved done, you know, commercial, they're commercial artists or whatnot. And, uh, you know, and a lot of times you're focused on what the client, you know, thinks and, um, you know, even with just the public in general. And, you know, it's given the artist an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm going to do something. I have something to say and I'm going to say it. And, uh, you know, maybe it's, maybe you don't like it, maybe you don't, but I'm going to say it and hopefully open up, you know, the opportunity, you know, conversation to engage viewers, to pull them in and, you know, maybe the viewers don't like it, maybe they do, but to give them the opportunity to at least take the time and think. I think, you know, for me, I think one of the most annoying things when I would do art shows in the past is, you know, when someone would just immediately walk up to the piece and say, I don't get it, what's it mean? What are you trying to say? And I go, oh, take, you know, take the time to at least think, you know, because um, I think a lot of us, you know, society in general, we want that, we, we, want, we want to be told what to think. And I think, and it's even yeah. reflected in education. You know, we tell it's memorization. We tell people what to think. This is this is right. This is wrong. Do this. Do that. And uh, and we become so conditioned. And I thought, you know, it'd be great to do a show where, you know, the artist says, you know what, I'm going to present this thing. I'm not going to tell you what it thinks. Take the time and, you know, and kind of pull people in and kind of give them the opportunity to do some reflection. Yeah. And I think that was the cool thing. about, And that was the cool thing about that art movement, even if you didn't like it. At least it, it, you had the opportunity um, to, it, it almost like gave you, you know, um, the opportunity to realize what you don't like. You know what I mean? Like, well, I know I don't like that now. Or, you know, yeah. And why, and why does this thing have to be this way? You know, why can't it be another way? And, uh, you know, and it was just one of those movements, you know, I, I, cause the thing too is a lot of people don't look at artists as being intellectual. You know what I mean? They're just kind of these crazy people that are loose and unpredictable and, you know, you can't really, they're not accountable and, you know, this and that. And, uh, um, and it's not, you know, a lot of us are educated or whatnot and, uh, maybe have some science type of background or, you know, humanities or whatnot. And, uh, you know, we like to read and, you know, discuss politics and all these things. And a lot of the things that people don't realize, you know what I mean? They think, you know, we can only, you know, maybe make a cool picture or write a cool poem or, you know, make a fun sounding song, you know, but they never take the time to listen to the lyrics or to look at the, you know, what are the lines on the painting trying, you know, to say, or right. what are the lines in the poem, you know, you know, what, what paint, you know, what picture is the poet painting or the writer? And uh, so I, we just thought it'd be a good, you know, this would be a good platform to kind of jump off, you know, as far as the Dada movement. Totally, totally. And I mean, even in regards to the area, you know, it's, it's re-envisioning what this area could do and what it's capable of, you know, sort of looking beyond, what what people have perceived the quote unquote rust belt as for the last hundred years and, and looking at uh, you know alternatives yeah um and like what james said that's uh was one of the main reasons we we went with the the title think for the show and you know because we're just trying to get people to think and it was just exploring dada you know, so we didn't. Uh, we don't want anybody getting too stuck on the idea of this. This is specifically one thing, and that it, it just took some things from Dada, and we're trying to take it a little bit further. Yeah, it was almost like we we said it's not Dada; it's inspired by Dada, and I think that's a, a great definition. Yeah, it's, even better than you know, yeah, it's inspired um, by Dada. You know, you're just inspired by the idea, and you know, a lot of the art that we have coming in, I don't even know what all of it is. Uh, we just basically gave a general guideline of what Dada was, and we're just kind of excited to see what they come up with. It, um, and we won't know that until like and the 14th. I've seen some people stuff. It, it's been interesting. The few things that I've saw, at least how each artist um, has decided to interpret, you know, what that is. You know, and, uh, it's kind of, kind of been cool. But yeah, in general, we have a lot of we haven't seen a lot of the work. You know, but just a few things that I have seen, or the, you know, what I've done, or you know, right on. Right. Um, because we're not trying to be judgmental and leave anybody out or say that this can't be put into there. And we have a lot of trust in the artists and the talent that we yeah. have in the show. Well, shockingly, yeah. we have a lot what? of trust in the artists, you know, because, like, I mean, you kind of have to. You know, this is, you know, we're letting the artists, you know, do this thing and we're not going to tell them it's right or wrong. And I think, you know, 
galleries, you know, at least in this area, you know, the not, you know, non big city um, type of galleries, they kind of want the more safer art. You know yeah. what I mean? They're more worried about what they're, you know, patrons are going to think. And the, we're not so worried about that. You know, this is, you know, here's the information interpreted how you want and no right or wrong, just do it. And, uh, and people have kind of like really grabbed onto that and um, seem to, seem to love it, you know, to be able to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that idea too. You know, I mean, here's here's an overreaching theme. Give us your interpretation. You know, yes. I that really frees an artist to be able to do good creative work. You know, when they're constrained. Yeah, you, you, people don't produce good work when they're constrained. No, you know no. what I mean. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, I mean, although there's something to be said for it in the process. You know, uh, sometimes when I'm writing poetry, for example, I write free verse. But if I get stuck, you know, I go to the old romanticism forms you know yes. what i mean to constrain myself you know so i purposely get some kind of creative jump yes but I, I mean i think that's basically what a theme is like here's a theme start thinking about it you know get yes. the wheels turning and the cool thing is it's all different forms of art so it's not just painting or photography i mean we have a we have performance um video yeah video sculptural, print making yep sky so it's a wide variety of the same idea so it's going to be interesting to see how each visual artist defines that in their own form and uh and it's cool too because uh, a few of the artists have decided to do works that incorporate you know um they're more interactive you know they're going to be more interactive with the people attending so that, that'll be interesting too as far as like you know pulling people in and uh, engaging them yeah yeah no that's that, that's fantastic yeah that sounds really interesting i, I know uh Patrick and myself plan on being in attendance Excellent. at the opening, you know, so um, I think that'll be that'll be an interesting thing. Um, <clears throat> is, is there anything else, uh, you know, I mean, first of all, give people all your contact information and, um, you, you know, and, and tell them a little bit about where they can look at, you know, first of all, um, you know, the Warren Arts Center, that stuff, and then, you know, your own work, you know, tell people where they can look at you guys' work as well. The Warren Arts Center. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, really, we just got set up. So, um, warnartscenter.com, uh, we'll have that website coming up here. Um, again, we're utilizing this data event to really finance um, uh, a lot of this. Uh, that'll be up. But really, if you go to, um, I guess, 410 Artisan Cafe, which is really where the building is, um, a lot of the links to what we're trying to do is actually right there. So uh, people can get a grasp of our event uh, from there and so forth. So that would be actually a good direction. Yeah, and then as far as your work? Uh, as far as my work, um, you know, I do a lot of photography. Uh, that's, you know, what I went to school for, a lot of fashion. Although, um, I guess, you know, my, especially for the Dada show, is I'm actually kind of making fun of fashion a little <laughs> bit, um, you know? <laughs> Surprisingly, a lot of people don't realize this. Columbus is actually a big hub for fashion. That's where the limited corporations from, and I uh, I worked down there. And uh, there was a lot of things I really disliked about uh, what they did and their approach. Uh, and I just kind of mock it and make fun of it a little bit. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm doing for the show. But uh, what about you, James? As far as my work, uh, you know, it can be found on online. I, uh, my wife and I, um, together, she, my wife's an artist as well. She's going to be in the show and, uh, you know, her and I together, um, you know, it was kind of cool because I was kind of doing my thing. I met her dated, you know, we got married and, uh, we created shooting arts, the two of us together. And, uh, her and I, um, we do our individual stuff, but we also collaborate a lot. And that's one, one of the cool things I think with her is, um, I've done a lot of collaboration with her and that's opened me up to collaborating with other artists and kind of reaching out. So it's been kind of, that's been a blessing in and of itself, but, uh, you know, and some of my stuff and her stuff can be found online, you know, on Facebook, on Shooting Arts, um, Tumblr, Instagram, you know, Twitter and so on and so on. And, uh, you know, some of my, I, you know, our, I do some photography, um, mixed media with, uh, YSU, um, graduated in, uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts and Painting, um, so I'll have some painting, mixed media, printmaking, um, and uh, sculptural. My wife will have some sculptural type of work, and uh, 
I don't know. It should be it should be pretty fun. Um, you know, and, uh, I don't know. And then Carl, he, you can find his. Surprise! We don't. We're not talking about our own stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, I got. Um, what did we talk about our exhibits and stuff? Yeah. You want yeah. to word? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got. What I'm doing is. Uh, this will be my second book that I'll be publishing. I'm going to release the book on the night of the show. I'm going to have like uh, a few copies. They'll be numbered and signed, and uh, launch the second book there. And it's going to be a reading, but what I'm, I'm kind of like smashing up like the first two books that I wrote in, into a uh, poetic piece, a performance piece. And I'll be inside of a room, and I don't want to give too much of it away, but I'll be reading facing a brick wall. There's going to be a bunch of TVs involved and, and get like a uh, kind of like an audio visual exhibit going on. And for me, I'm really excited about this because this gave me a, uh, a platform to get a show. I, I had originally envisioned my stuff, my stuff as a show, as a performance piece, like an hour long reading of like a book. And then to have like visuals and stuff going on with it. And when I tried to pitch this to people, they were just kind of like, yeah, what, whatever. It, like it wouldn't be any kind of a draw. This gave me a platform where I could try to do something like this with the, the other artists in and uh, get some attention to it. And because poetry is a real hard sell nowadays. And, I gotta uh, tell you what, it sure is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of the poets, we had to evolve into uh, writing song lyrics, you know, because we were just yeah. basically like dying off. So for me, this is like a, a last, my last gasp of, you know, air as a poet, you know, like out there and just going to shout it all out and uh, try to get some attention to it. So I'm very excited about this, to have this opportunity. I've been writing for 20 years and this is the first chance that I've had to really get out there in front of people and do what I what I believe I was originally intended to do so I'm very grateful for that yeah absolutely absolutely yeah that's great that's great actually Carl plug uh, uh, Zen speak if you want to I mean, that's how we first met I think we mutually read some of each other's work yeah yeah um, yeah actually my website just went down I have to figure out what's going on with that but I have uh, Zen speak nine dot wordpress dot com it's a uh, on a, on a, it's a WordPress site that's got all my poetry on it. Uh, I got a Facebook page for Zen Speak Publications, and I also do photography, which is Zen Street Photography. Um, I got a book out right now that's available on Lulu. In a couple weeks, I'll have my second book available out. Um, really, my best way is just uh, you know follow me on fa uh, Facebook, uh, Carl Paul Henneman, and uh, or send me a friend request, man. I don't care and. Uh, you know, I, I put all my stuff up uh, up there, links to my stuff, and um, you could go from there. Great, great, great. Yeah, as always, all that, uh, you know, we will link most of those things in the description to this video. Um, gentlemen, it's been a real pleasure uh, talking to you guys tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Um, yeah, we got, uh, just real quick before we mention, definitely the show February 21st, man. That's what we're trying to hype uh you got to get out there, support it. I'd like to see you guys out there, man. Um, we're going to have uh, a trolley taking people back and forth from the parking garage by Dave Grohl Alley. Um, it's going to be really cool, really interesting. So, um, yeah, if uh, if you ever wanted to support the, ar the arts, man, now's the time. Get out there. Help keep this scene alive, man. That's actually worth mentioning. Uh, uh, Warren, Ohio, birthplace of Dave Grohl of Nirvana Foo Fighters fame. <laughs> he's, 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 he's got an alley named after him up there <laughs> yeah yeah it's neat it's got some artwork up here from local artists that are uh, pretty badass so uh, definitely get down here and uh, check that out too yeah yeah and we will uh, why don't you what, did, there, is it just the uh, the Facebook page for the event the think event yeah um, if you go to uh, Facebook I think uh, Facebook at 410 artisan cafe um you could go there there'll be a link um you'll probably see a link on carl's page my page uh but most certainly we're actually going to work here in the next week to get that link to uh our site the um uh, warren art center and uh also at 410 artisancafe.com as well so uh, you'll you'll probably if you go there you'll probably see a link attached to that to, to direct you where you need to go Great, 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 great. 
And if anyone can't make it to the event, Free Radical Media will be, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be following it, and you know, we'll have some kind of, uh, you, you know, at least point a link in your direction. So if you're curious as to how it went, you can't make it, you'll be able to check it out. Gentlemen, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. It was fun. Yeah, yeah thanks thank a lot you for guys. having really us on, man. It. I love your stuff. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Warren Art Center, Free Radical Media.